Yes, you heard right. I'm going to be showing you how to master Forex with something as simple as a coin flip. So as we obviously know, in South Africa, Instagram traders win 100% of the time. Whether they trade with a robot or anything else, on the Instagram we can see 100% success rate. But once again, that's unfortunately not true and that is not a key fact and that's, that's not how you become a successful trader. If you guys ever go and watch the video of, of Forex Cycle of Doom, you guys will see what happens to most traders chasing a 90 or 100% success rate. We see all these guys trading and they always show wins, but that's not reality of trading. Reality of trading is even if you have a 40% success rate, you can make money. And that's what this video is going to be about for you on the other side, knowing that I win 30, 40% of the times, but I'm still not profitable. So how do I get to 80%? How do you get to 80% is not the right question to ask. How do you capitalize on the 40% is the right question to ask. All right, so we all know the classic game of heads and tails. I know there's a, a few videos of people using heads and tails. I don't know how they use it. I've never seen that video. So I know one of my close friends actually did it, Carl. Shout out to him. Um, so when he told me about the concept of heads and tails, I was like, well, it makes sense. But I've never seen a video on it. And I know there's probably videos out there, but I don't know how they do it and how they explain. So I want to explain it in my way and show you guys how to do it. And then after this, I'm going to show you how we implement this into the charts. So we obviously know heads and tails, you have a 50-50 chance. If we bet $1,000, whatever it is, and you say it's going to land on heads, if it lands on heads, you double your money. So that's a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. Okay? If you bet $100, you can get $100 back. So it's one-to-one. -one. So what if you had the opportunity to say, I'm telling you, okay, we play heads and tails. Every time you win, you win twice the amount that you're risking. And if you lose, you only lose one time. So that means you have a one-to-two risk reward ratio. So let's say the first one is going to be heads and we have tails at this specific point. Okay, so the first one was a loss. We lost $100, so let's do the second one. So let's do heads again or buy, sell, whatever you wanna do. So now it's tails again, so we're gonna take a second loss at this specific time. We're gonna do 10 trades. Okay, so one thing we can really realize is that I'm really bad at heads and tails, so let's do tails this time. Once again, you guys see how I'm changing my mindset because I keep doing the same thing. So maybe I'm stuck in a bias, another video that I also did. So it's going to be tails. So once again, now we are up $200. So we've lost twice, but now we took one win and now we made $200 back. Okay, and so let's do number four. Let's do heads for this instance and it's going to be heads. So now we make another $200 in this trade. Okay, so we're about four trades down, 50% success rate, and already we are up four of $200 on this specific trading account. And let's do another tails for this example, and it's going to be heads, so we're gonna lose another $100. Okay, number six, we're gonna do tails, let's hit it, and it's gonna be heads, so we lose another $100. And number seven, we're gonna do tails again, and it's gonna be heads again, so we lose another $100. And number eight, we're gonna do heads, and it's going to be heads, so we're gonna win $200. And number nine, we're gonna do heads again, and it's gonna be tails, so we're losing $100. And for the final one, let's do tails. And it's going to be tails, so we're winning $200. All right, guys, as we can see, we had a 40% success rate, 40% success rate. So, you know, trading world, if we took 10 trades, we only won 40% of the time, which isn't a good success rate. You can push it up to 60, 70%. But in this instance, we did 40%, and still with it, general one to two risk reward ratio, we are still up $200. Okay, so let's say we had a thousand dollar account. We are still up 20% in 10 trades, which should take you one month, um, even less if you obviously have higher trading trading volume as well. So within a month, you made 20% ROI, which is more than most hedge funds do in a year. So stop having unrealistic expectations, but focus on a good risk reward ratio. So now the key thing is, in the market you have opportunities, and that's what we're gonna to touch on now, to increase your risk reward even up to one to three, one to four, one to five. So if we had a one to three risk reward ratio, we will be winning $300, $300, $300, $300, dollars. So that would equal another $400 on top of this. So that means we would have had a $600 profit margin, meaning we have 60% growth on our specific account, having a 40% success rate. So risk reward is a key factor to all of you guys out there. And if you can start implementing a good risk reward and start focusing on that, you can become a profitable trader without having the best strategy or the ultimate trading robot 5.0 or something in that sense.
So guys, we're going to start it pretty simple uh, with the OGC trade. So once again, why do I always go back into the market? That's a question that I get a lot. But if you guys just join the free community, 100% free community, then you guys will see all the trades that I'm always going through. So this OGSD trade was explained to the point, zero drawdown um, on the free community. I do full market updates. I don't do screenshots or anything. So I love explaining why I'm looking for certain things because in that way, you're not getting what we know as signals. You're actually understanding my thought process behind the trade. So this is a trade we gave out for a longer term position. So I will be explaining the shorter term and the longer term. So yeah, same same technicals we've had in since like two, three weeks back, we had a daily break of structure. So although we went a weekly downtrend, we said daily low, 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 high, low, 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 high from the sideways market, a little bit of a liquidity grab there at the bottom and then price pushed to the top side. Then we had a high low, first indication of a reversal to the top side. Price then went and closed above daily break of structures. Even if you trade trend lines, you know that that's a daily break of structure. So now what most traders will be thinking and doing is obviously wait for the resistance to become support. They will buy their straight into profits and then they will obviously fail to identify that break and then an actual sell. So we actually gave out that sell to this point and then the buy to the top side. So now as a trader, you obviously know that there's so many options happening within this specific chart. You have this buying level over there and you have this buying level over there and you have that buying level over there. So there's so many things happening that most traders don't actually get the fair opportunity to take the trade because they always end up um, losing. So I'm going to exp be explaining this chart in this formation in risk reward, obviously. But for a lot of you guys, I'm not just going to focus on a certain specific person that gets the best entries. Because obviously, if you're watching this video, you are most probably not the trader that gets zero drawdown entries. So that's why I'm trying to change it a little bit up. I will explain to you guys how to get the better entry, but also how to execute if you can't and don't understand how to get a better entry. So when we have a break of structure, we know we're looking for a pullback and a buy because we're in a buying trend. So now, how do we know where price is pulling back to? So it's always once again back to the, the previous point, confluence. Where's the point of confluence? Where, because where confluence is met is where buyers and sellers lines up. So what I always do is I always throw my FIB in firstly, okay? Now we know that price should be pulling back to the 61 or 78% FIB. Which one? We don't know and we really don't care in this specific instance. We're going to try and identify confluence within the specific levels. So I always put the 38% FIB in so I can see a few continuation levels, but there's no buying levels okay then the first buying level that i will see is over there but now i can already see that the 61 fib is lower so i already know that we should be moving to towards that buying level so then i will have my area of demand or order block or anything that you want to call it um to the 61 to the 78 percent fib okay so that's point number one but obviously we know that most traders with that big red candle dropping to the downside most traders will probably enter over there okay so now we form a little bit of a bigger area of demand. So now what most people will do is once again, people always preach, have the smaller stop loss, all those type of things. It really doesn't matter. As long as you have a good risk reward, it really doesn't matter. Okay. In this instance, we'll have a 500 point of uh, 500 point of 50 pip stop loss. Okay. No one's going to target that. You're obviously going to target the new high realistically. Okay, so now based on our previous example, we obviously only need a 1 to 2 risk to reward ratio. So you can take that trade as is and you'll follow that concept. So if you win 40% of the times, you'll be profitable. But we obviously see the power of having a little bit of a bigger risk reward in this instance. Okay, so in this instance, what I will do is rather than having one entry, I will stack my entries within the buying zone. So if I use a 3 cent, for example, or 30 cent, I'll break that up into three entries, okay? All of them having the same stop loss and obviously putting our target at the next available high. I'll also go into trade management now as well with this position. And now we have a buy. So as soon as price reaches that point, I will take a buy because that's something that I've planned for. I've already identified that buying level. So first entry will have a 1 to 2.58 risk reward ratio, meaning if we risk $100, we're going to be making $250 let's say $220 minus spread, swap fees, whatever it might be. Then price dips lower, where most traders then exit, we take another entry. Now we have a one to 3.77 risk reward ratio. And then finally price dips low and we have a one to five. So let's say in this instance, we're risking $100 per trade. Um, you can obviously work it out in your own way if you wanna use $10. Let's use 
hundred dollars as the example so we're going to take hundred dollar trades on the same thing so now a key factor once again you guys see i'm not focusing on a set lot size i'm focusing on a risk amount okay because we don't work out the lot sizes we work out how much money are we risking that's obviously risk you don't walk into a casino and risk lot size you risk money you put a certain amount of money on the table so now our total risk is $300 and we're going to be risking $100, $100, $100. So in that first instance, if we have a 512 um, point or 51 pip stop loss, that means if we use a 1 cent, we risk $5. Okay, if we have a 10 cent, we're risking $50. Already we know in this trade, we're going to be taking a 0 0.2 lot size to equal, obviously, the total risk of $100. If price moves against us. We are also going to risk the same stop loss. It doesn't help you move your stop loss because then risk reward goes out of the table or out of the equation again. So here we're risking 3.7. So that means that we're risking 3.72 um, dollars for every point uh, for every entry that we take. So we're going to have about a zero point should be like 28 lot size. So now not only does our risk to reward increase, but also our lot size increases. Okay. And then finally the third entry we have a 2.7 so now we're going to be doing something like a 0.36 lot size at the bottom entry so once again not only does your risk reward increase your profits also increases because you have a bigger lot size smaller risk bigger take profit target so now even if we just take the market to that point on this specific position we'll make a lot of money um, and obviously as, as price keeps going down we keep making more money and more money and more money so we're going to be making $570, going to be making another $350, so about $900, and then eventually the $250. So we're making $1,150 on this specific trade. So we don't have a complete 1 to 5 risk reward ratio, but it counts up to 1 to 4 risk to reward ratio on this specific position. So now a key factor when you're in a trade, you obviously want to capitalize on your winners. Like I said, capitalize on the 40%. You don't care about the 60%. You don't always have to figure out what you're doing wrong with the 60%. Obviously, over time, you need to focus and try and figure out if there's a pattern in your mistakes and then try and work around it. Don't try and change it, move to new pairs or anything. Try and work around it to help yourself become profitable. So now when the market moves to the top side, once again, what happens? Retail traders obviously try and sell the market because it's at a high point. But we already figured out that we're in a daily buying trend. So we don't care about sales. We obviously care about buys. So now as the price pulls down, we, what we want to do is add our FIB low to high, then look at the 38% continuation FIB. As long as price stays above that level, we are still good to go to the top to the top side. And then another key factor, which you can also do is you can add your FIB the other side. And if we break through the 78% FIB, you know you have a break of structure to the top side and you're looking for continuation. So in this specific instance now, where you would have made $1,100, you can actually extend your take profit and look close to a $2,000 trade with a $300 risk, meaning that we are up six trades. Okay, so that is then once again called pushing your stops forward, saying that now I'm up six trades. Okay, I can lose the next six trades and still be profitable. So what most traders now go and do is they obviously over risk because the confidence is high, I've made $2,000 and that's when obviously the traders create kicks in. But then the key factor is staying to the same risk management. Risk $300 again and again and again. Because you know you only win 40% of the time. So you can't be having bigger risk now because you're confident in yourself. You need to have the same risk over and over again. And once you reach a certain point, double your account or 200% ROI, whatever, then you withdraw some of it and then obviously start adjusting your load sizes towards that specific risk point. Once again, thank you for everyone that is watching and supporting. I hope to see you guys on the next one.